Hello and welcome to our video series on dealing with sextortion. I'm Joanna. Today we're going to be talking about the messaging platform Kick and what to do if you're currently being sextorted on Kick. So let's get right into it. Due to the anonymity of interactions on the Kick platform, in 2023, Kick has become an ideal place for scammers to conduct their business without having to reveal personal information. Kick is a Canadian-based messaging app founded in 2009 by a group of students from the University of Waterloo. In August of 2015, Kick received a $50 million investment from the parent company of the Chinese messaging service WeChat. In 2016, the arrest of a registered sex offender uncovered the fact that more than 200 Kick groups existed dedicated to the distribution and sale of child pornography. A state law enforcement official interviewed by the New York Times in February 2016 identified Kick as the problem app of the moment and police said they found Kick's response to the situation frustrating. And one detective stating that obtaining information from Kick was a quote, bureaucratic nightmare. In September 2019, Kick CEO and founder Ted Livingston announced in a blog post that Kick Messenger would be shut down on the 19th of October 2019 with over 100 employees laid off. However, this decision was later reversed. Since then, very little statistical data has been published about the app. And in 2023, we're still only able to see usage stats based off of 2017. The Kick blog has also not been updated since 2020 at the time of this video. And Kick has unfortunately become an outdated cesspool rampant with scammer activity, including the increasingly popular scam sextortion that digital investigation has seen grow exponentially in recent years. In Kick related cases of sextortion, the criminal will typically funnel their victims onto this platform from other more mainstream communication apps, such as Instagram or Reddit, then stating that Kick is their preferred method of communication. Although Kick is frequently abused by bots that spam users with pornographic media to users when engaged, in cases of sextortion, the perpetrator will usually maintain live communication with their victim and coerce them into sending explicit material such as naked pictures or videos, and most often requesting that the face of the victim be included in the media, as this will have maximum impact on the victim once the blackmail threat is revealed. In cases where the sextortionist has information about the social media accounts of the victim, once they have received sufficient material, they will then notify the victim of their intent to blackmail, often stating that they will ruin the life of the person in question and send the material to all of their friends, family, and coworkers. In cases where the blackmailer does not have access to the victim's personal social media, they may state that they will upload the material to the internet or demand that the victim provide social media account names or other personal information, such as an email or phone number, as part of their demand. In this and both cases, the victim should never comply, as providing additional information to the blackmailer only increases the leverage they have and the validity of their threats. Additionally, the blackmailer may inform the victim that they have a sick relative, that some of the money will be donated to charity, or otherwise attempt to justify the reason why they are blackmailing the victim. This psychological trick is a facade designed to manipulate their target on a separate front and provide them with a carrot and a stick incentive to comply with the blackmail demand. The amount of ransom demanded by the perpetrator will also differ per case, but regardless of the amount requested, if the victim pays, the blackmailer will always be back to ask for more money. Victims should never comply with the demands of a sextortionist. We will be making a more detailed video about how to deal with a sextortionist step-by-step -step, no matter what the platform is, so stay tuned for that. Our advice is that the victim should seek professional help for the situation from a company such as Digital Investigation as well as file a report with the police and the IC3. 
While the police and IC3 may have limited resources to deal with the situation, filing these types of reports is an important step toward demonstrating to legislation that this is a problem that needs more government resources. But to reach a resolution in this predicament, the best thing to do is to reach out to a company like Digital Investigation or any cyber forensic company that handles these types of cases. Our experts have years of experience in dealing with cases of sextortion and using proprietary digital forensic software, IP to location, we are able to uncover the identities of sextortionists and incentivize them to delete all material on behalf of our clients. Above all, if you are dealing with any instance of sextortion, remember that you are not alone. Hundreds of thousands of individuals have fallen for this scam, and even if it feels like your world is falling apart right now, you will get through this difficult period. If you or someone you know is in a life-threatening situation, call 988 instead. Thanks for watching and stay safe.